I could have gifting. I could have a title. If I didn't have love, I'm missing the whole point. It's what I found in my Bible. It's the first thing Holy Spirit taught me. If I didn't have love, I got nothing. So I'm in the bedroom seeking and pursuing, and I want to become love because I got reading my Bible, and I started realizing some things. I'm just going to be real general and basic. You all all right? As I was pursuing to become love because I realized when I read my Bible, God made me to love. He made me for his image. God said, let us make man in our, in our image, in our own image, and in our likeness. He's not talking about a head, arms, and legs because he's a spirit. God's a spirit. It's not about what God looks like. It's about who God is. That's why the whole room looks different. Because God didn't make us to look like him. God make us, made us to be like him. Not to look like him in the sense of appearance. That's why the whole room looks different and we can all look like him. Come on, that's incredible. Like, and we're so caught up if we're not careful on outward appearance, hair, hair texture, nose shape, ears, rest, stuff. People on lips, say on the third set of lips. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. God didn't make us to look like he looks if you look at him in a physical way because God's spirit. He had to give Jesus a body to come as a man to fulfill what man failed. But God's a spirit, but yet God says, let us make man in our image. You can look up the word, and there's a lot of teaching there, but it's real simple to me. Like if a child can't get this, we probably don't have it right. You can get so deep that adults are like, what are you trying to say? No, it's simple. God said, let us make man like we are. We're love. That's why if I don't have love, I got nothing because it's the reason I'm here. I'm just telling you straight up. I can see it in the word. We're on the earth to love, not to need it, to be it. And the only reason we've been so busy needing it, because man got separated from God through his sin, got separated and cut off from God. And all of a sudden he got cut off from the source of love. He got cut off from the source of life. That's why man died inside. Got cut off from the source of love. That's why he became self-centered. Because self-centered and love are total opposites. Yeah? Read in 1 Corinthians where it says, if you don't have love, you have nothing. It doesn't seek its own. Now, I'm telling you, all the trouble we've had in our lives, all the emotional trouble, all the animosity, all the fallouts, all the breakups, all the cutoffs, all the stuff we've been through is because man became self-centered. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 16, if you're going to follow me, you got to deny yourself. It's the biggest problem on the planet. Come on, the biggest problem on the planet is you living for you when you're made for God's image. If you're living for you and you're made for God's image, no wonder we have a lot of hang-ups and a lot of things because it's the way we're looking at things. We're looking at what it did to us, how it affected us, how it made us feel, how it wasn't fair, how it wasn't right. Now, if you're living in that arena, you ain't seeing nobody around you because your eyes are on one person, you. See, this is the paradox. And if you don't deny yourself and learn that we're not a Christian for our sake, we're a Christian for his name and the sake of others, that's the only way you're going to actually live effective and ever actually taste freedom in your life. Because if you don't die to yourself, you're already in a prison because it's all about you. And then everything that happens in life affects you. So you're actually in a prison. You've you got a lot of bondage if you're self-centered. Because just one person, just one person can dictate your disposition. Just one person can dictate your outcome, your outlook. Just one person not doing you right, and all of a sudden, you live done not right. <laughs> and you think you're in control because you're self-centered? Nope, you're in a prison. And everything that happens in life matters so much and determines how you are, how you respond, how you feel, and how you act. Boy, if you just die to that, we can get on with Jesus. Start seeing some people around us and actually have something to give instead of trying to live for ourselves. Come on, it's Jesus' plan. He says, if, if, if you don't deny yourself, you ain't never going to pick up your cross. And if you don't pick up your cross, you ain't following him. Following him. Follow me. Man, Jesus said, follow me. He didn't just say, need me, sing to me. Run your list by me. Follow me. 
He was being treated wrong every day. Think about it. Jesus treated wrong every day. Every day, men were lying about him, backbiting, questioning everything that came out of his mouth in their minds. He went through it every day. Totally perfect, totally pure, totally amazing, and getting hit from every side by people every day. Read your Bible. Never changed, never stopped the good in him. Never let men decide who he was, how he was doing, why. He's love. It's not because he's Jesus. It's because he's love. If it was because he's Jesus, we couldn't follow that because we're not Jesus. But if it's because he's love, we can follow that. Woo! Come on! We can follow that. Mm -mm -mm. Deny yourself, pick up your cross. What's pick up your cross? It just means don't let anything going on in your life dictate who you are and how you are. Walk through it and keep your eyes on Jesus and manifest him. And when they squeeze you, he ought to come out. <laughs> come on, if you squeezed an orange, what would you get? Orange juice. If you took that orange and split it this morning and put it on that little pampered chef, little ridgy thing and get all the, pour it in the cup and drank it and it was apple juice, you'd spit it right in the cup. If you squeezed an orange and got apple juice, that'd be weird, wouldn't it? So why isn't it weird when you squeeze a Christian and you get everything but Christ? That should be super weird. It should be really weird to us to squeeze us and not get Christ. But if you're not alive for his great name and you're just alive for your own well-being, you'll probably get you when you get squeezed. If you're in this for you, it's probably you that comes out in pressure. Let me just say it this way. If you've been done wrong and you're living done wrong, then it'd be really good to hear and take heed to what I'm saying. If your story is all about what you've been through instead of all about what he's been through to give you new life, new attitude, a new way, a new reason for being, come on, he makes things new. You don't put old wine in a new wineskin. That new wine don't hold up in an old wine skin. It'll leak out the cracks and spill on the ground. It's supposed to come out of your belly like a river of living water. <laughs> right onto that girl. It's supposed to pour out, not leak into the floor. <laughs> well, you know, brother, life's been tough. It's been a little rough, man. I've been under a lot of pressure. You know what we say? How about people say, you ever hear this in the church? This is, we're notorious for this. Well, brother, just keep me in prayer. It's been a wilderness season. You ever hear that? You ever hear somebody tell you they've been through a wilderness and their face gets sad and they, they start barely walking? <laughs> I'm thinking, you must be in the children of Israelites' wilderness where it was all about them and it'd be better for us and it'd be better for us and it'd be better for us. Because Jesus' wilderness, he's ministered to by angels and powered in the spirit and he comes out on fire. Like he's in the same wilderness and he comes out of that wilderness and he's on fire for God. Angels minister to him. Yes, yeah, same wilderness, same temptations, same devil, just trying to get him to think for himself. So the next time a Christian says they're in the wilderness, they should have angels minister to them. They should be filled with the Spirit, ready to say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me. He's reading Isaiah 61. He opens the door to the wilderness and comes out, and he reads Isaiah 61. He doesn't say, keep me in prayer. It's been a rough month. <laughs> he was in there 40 days. The Israelites were in there 40 years. He fulfilled what they failed in 40 days and came out empowered by the Spirit. Don't you take claim to the wilderness and make it a bad thing. See, every time you get tried in something, you ought to just consider it something testing the Word. Something testing the Word. Don't get, don't get spooky with it and don't get, it's just something testing the Word. And this ain't even about me. This is about the kingdom. I'm going to submit to God. Resist the devil, he's going to flee, and I'm going to come out of this knowing God more. Every time you're in adversity, every time you're in adversity, don't try to get scientific with it. Don't get all caught up and ask 20 questions. You know what? The wise man in Matthew 7 had the same storm as the foolish man in Matthew 7. The wise man didn't have the storm because he opened a door. He had the storm because he heard the word, and he did the word.
And the storm still came. It didn't try to destroy the wise man. It tried to destroy what was building the wise man. It tried to tear down the word. Mark 4 teaches us that. The sower sows the word. Satan immediately comes for the word's sake. He ain't after you. He's after the word. If you're surrendered, that word will grow into something. You'd be a wise man. Don't be any other mother types of soils that hear it and run out with joy, but you ain't got no root in you and the trials and the heat of the day, just take it all away. Cares of life, take it all away. Sown out in a, mo a wrong motive, left field, la la land, like just sown out in left field, trampled down. What's the devil doing? Trying to steal the word. You gotta deny yourself. This is the only thing Christianity has ever been. I know we made it a prayer to go to heaven, but it's deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow Jesus. And Jesus is like an amazing expression of loving the world and not being of it, but loving the people, laying down his life. I mean, Jesus is every day walking through it and never changing. He let men hit him. <laughs> and you think I'm going to be offended because you said something? He let men hit him. Why am I talking about this at a city quake? Because if you don't live this way, you'll never be confident and be filled up and feel powered up to even notice the people around you, let alone feel like you have anything to give them. You'll feel like you're just always barely making it if you even feel like you're making it. And that's the lie of self-focus. That's the lie of not living surrendered. That's the lie of making it all about me and what I get from him instead of what I become because of him. I don't come to God for what I can get from him. I want to be more like him because he made me for his image. And if I don't have love, I got nothing and I'm missing the whole point. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.5 says the goal of our instruction is love. It flows out of a pure heart, a sincere and a clear conscience and a sincere and childlike faith. The pure heart and the clear conscience go hand in hand. You violate the heart, you'll violate the conscience. You violate the conscience, you'll shipwreck the faith. It's a sequence. Are you all with me?